Hi, I'm James Wise, and this is the Tenants from Hell show. For those of you who have been following this show, I want to thank you very much for your support. I want to take this time to get something out there right now, though, because this is going to be a very somber show. A lot of times we like to you know, portray things in a humorous manner because a lot of these tenants from health situations are really just small bumps in the road that you as investors can get through very easily. Not the case for what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the worst of the worst. So I think it's very important. I want to get that out here right now in the very beginning of this video that the purpose of this series isn't to vilify tenants or to position tenants against their landlords. Whenever tenants and landlords are going at each other, that is a negative that isn't good for either side. The majority of tenants are great people, just like the majority of landlords are great people. But on both sides of the aisle, there's going to be bad actors. That's where we get the moniker tenants from hell. Yes, tenants from hell are traditionally bad people, but very important that you know that by no means am I saying or do I believe that all tenants are tenants from hell. Today, we are going to talk about what can happen when tenants and landlords escalate against one another, horrible situations, violence, and the worst type of violence, murder. Let's dive in. If you look at the news and mass media coverage, typically you see a lot of negativity. According to police, Khan was fatally stabbed by his landlord, to murdering a woman she collected police rent from. For shooting Susan Johnson and murdering her 19-year-old son, Derek The landlord and handyman are now being charged with felony murder. New shot dead following an argument with his landlord. Tenant dispute turned deadly in Evergreen. Deputies found 33-year-old Alexander Hudspeth shot in the chest in the driveway of a home on Highway 73. Hell, even this show, The Tenants from Hell show, I could see how that could lead you to believe that, you know, there's just a ton of negativity in the landlord and property management business. I want to make sure that you know that that is actually the outlier. You know, these are the most extreme stories we have in this business. The overwhelming majority of the property management and landlording business is pretty mellow and it's highly profitable. But those things, you know, those aren't necessarily teaching moments. There isn't really enough content or enough to put your teeth into when I tell you, hey, you know, my tenants at property X, Y, and Z all paid their rent today. I deposited it in the bank and uh, it was just a great day. You know, there isn't really anything to learn about that. So those good experiences, which happen a majority of the time, sometimes they can, it seems like they can be pushed to the wayside. Uh, and what you really see out there, you know, with this show or with other publications in the media is just a ton of the negativity. We cannot ignore these types of extreme cases though, because this is what we learn from. You know, we need to learn from these situations and, and figure out the best ways to minimize their occurrence. They are already in the minority. We need to mitigate them as much as possible. You know, I'm not going to say we'll ever be able to eliminate these types of situations, but if we can reduce them as much as humanly possible, it's going to be better for me. It's going to be better for you. It's going to be better for the tenants living in these properties. When landlords and tenants and just anyone in general is at odds with each other over things like housing or money, sometimes tempers can flare and situations can escalate. You know, when we're talking about people's livelihood and the roof over their head, you know, the stakes have never been higher than in those two situations. And landlords and tenants, they don't always see eye to eye, nor are their interests necessarily aligned. When these two opposing forces interact with each other, over a perceived or actual slight on one side or the other, that's when you run into terrible situations. Couple that with the fact that sometimes these people are tenants from hell and they are criminals or they are bad people, 
Again, not to say that all tenants are bad because that is absolutely not the case. And I'm not trying to say that all landlords are good because that is absolutely not the case either. There are absolutely landlords from hell just as there are tenants from hell. For example, here in Cleveland, there was an apartment complex called the Morning Star Apartments. Back in 2014, things during an eviction escalated so much so that the city bailiffs ended up in a violent shootout with the tenant who was being evicted. During this shootout, you know, gunfire's going every which way. Everyone's in danger from the tenant to the bailiffs to the neighbors. The tenant ended up being shot twice and he ended up dying of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. But it's not just here in Cleveland. You know, when we have tenants and landlords and money and housing involved, tempers are flaring. This could happen anywhere in America. In New York, in the Bronx, New York, there was a 44-year-old man named Zakir Khan. Zakir was actually stabbed to death by his landlord. The relationship between Zakir and his landlord escalated because allegedly Zakir had told the landlord he was going to help him sell that home but instead of doing so, Zakir moved his family in. This upset the landlord. Things escalated. The landlord violently attacked and killed Zakir. The landlord eventually ended up turning himself in. In Brooklyn, we've got the gruesome story of Leah Cavas. Leah had a tenant by the name of Chanel Latoya Thompson Brown. Leah and Chanel ended up in an argument over only $200. This escalated and Leah ended up killing Chanel and then to hide the body she actually dismembered Chanel and hid her remains all throughout the city. And most recently the murder of a landlord named David Stokey out of South Jordan, Utah. This is just a sad sad story um, and there's some things in there that I think could have been done differently to help prevent situations like this in the future. As the story goes, David had some tenants living in one of his properties, and these people had not paid any rent since they moved in. David went to the home. He confronted the tenants at their home. Apparently it was at night. I believe it was around 8 o'clock at night. While David was at the property confronting these tenants and trying to remove them from his property, things escalated and he was allegedly shot and killed by his tenant, Manuel Velasquez. Allegedly, Manuel then hid David's body in a crawl space under the home. The David Stoko story is an especially sad story for a few reasons. Number one, it's so recent. As I'm here talking to you right now, this literally just happened last week and it is still an ongoing case. In addition to being a landlord, he was also a professional in the business. He was also a realtor. And on top of that, you know, he was a family man. He had a wife and four young children. So, you know, it's very disheartening. It's a very sad story. As a matter of fact, People have started a GoFundMe account for his family. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that GoFundMe in the description below. You know, those landlords out there who feel compelled to donate, you can click that link in the description below to make a donation if you so choose. There are three things I'd like you to take away from this video today and from the David Stokoe story as well as the other stories I mentioned. And the first of those things is awareness. I don't want you to go into this business flying blind, thinking everything is sunshine and rainbows. Are these negative events common? No, not necessarily. Events like this are absolutely in the minority. The overwhelming experience as a landlord is generally positive, but these things, they do happen. I myself have been involved in potentially violent or dangerous situations in my landlording career. At one point, I actually had a tenant who was a violent felon track down my personal address and threaten to burn down the house I live in with my family. Holton Wise has a worldwide audience of real estate investors. If you are a lender, home inspector, or anyone else with a real estate related business who would like to increase your sales and exposure with an ad in one of our videos, go to holtonwise.com today.
I don't want to get into the full story on that right now as I've already made a video recounting my experiences. So I'll go ahead and put that in the show notes below. But these things do happen and I don't want you to be blindsided or completely flabbergasted or confused when you end up in an unfortunate situation like this. You have to be aware that these things can occur and if you can, try to prepare for them as much as humanly possible. And you'll be able to prepare for them by educating yourself. Continue to learn, continue to watch content and see all of these other situations that have occurred. All of the stories that we present to you on this channel, these are real stories that have happened to other people. Typically, we could watch these stories and see if maybe we can learn a little bit from them take what happened and see if maybe we can adjust our behavior just a little bit and possibly lower the probability that we will find ourselves in a similar position down the road. Which leads me to my second takeaway from these stories and that's to take precautions. The biggest common denominator in all of these landlord-tenant disputes that have resulted in violence seems to be the landlord and the tenants entering into an altercation on site in close physical proximity to one another. In the story with David Stokey, David was actually at the tenant's homes when that situation occurred. With Leah and Chanel, a neighbor had testified that they saw Leah and Chanel arguing over that $200 the same day of Chanel's death. And our tenant from the Bronx, Zakir Khan, the landlord that had stabbed and killed him had actually lived in the same duplex as Zakir. So when things are escalating, don't think that you always have to go in there and confront that person in an aggressive or in-person manner. There are other modes of communication that you can use. You can use the telephone, you can use text, you can use email. Email has always been my most preferred method of communication. On top of limiting the ability for things to escalate in a face-to-face -face manner, email is going to provide you with written documentation of how things transpired. That is something that you can refer to later, you know, if you end up in court or things, you know, move forward through the legal system. There is nothing wrong with using the legal system. You do not have to see eye to eye. All tenants are not going to see eye to eye with their landlords and just fighting with each other, getting aggressive, trying to make the other party see things from your perspective or fall into line with what you want them to do. It's not always going to work. Sometimes these tenants are just terrible people. Sometimes they really are tenants from hell. Don't go there and put yourself in a situation where you're going to try to corner them. They're going to be like an animal cornered in a cave. They're going to react violently and you could find yourself on the wrong end of some seriously deviant behavior. Don't be afraid to turn the situation over to your legal team. Sometimes it's best to let the legal process do its thing. If you get to a point where you don't think you and that tenant are going to see eye to eye, simply wash your hands of the situation, turn it over. Don't put yourself in a position to get violent. Do not allow yourself to get emotionally invested and emotionally attached. These are just financial investments and we have to roll with the punches. When you're investing in real estate, even though I keep telling you that these bad situations are the minority, they do happen, they will happen, you'll never prevent them. So when you're investing in these properties, build that into your budget. Understand that every single tenant you place into your property is not always going to pay the rent. So when you do get a tenant who doesn't pay the rent, you don't turn into that landlord from hell who loses their mind, goes ballistic, and turns to violence and assaults another person because you perceive that they slighted you. Get yourself out of that position, turn it over to the professionals. Which takes me to my third takeaway from this video, if you are a highly emotional investor, a highly emotional landlord, and you want to be involved, and you are just like super emotionally involved, I understand you're trying to build your portfolio, you're trying to provide for your family, build your empire, so to speak. You know, I love this business. I take a lot of pride in this business. I love when I'm driving through these cities and I see my name and my sign on hundreds of properties. It's a great source of pride for myself and my family. 
but you have to know that you need to be able to separate yourself from that business. You have to accept those bad things are going to happen. If you don't think that you can do that, if you think that every missed rent payment or every time a tenant breaks something is going to set you into a rage, don't put yourself in that situation. Turn the properties over to train professional property managers. You don't always have to be a landlord to be a real estate investor. You don't have to personally manage that property. There are other people who can handle that for you and put a gap between you and the tenants. Whenever there is a disagreement, having that third party manager involved in the situation is always going to de-escalate things. You know, the tenant is mad at you because they feel you're not providing them with the product they want. You're incredibly mad at the tenant because they're not paying you for the property that you provided them, the property that you put your blood, sweat, and tears into purchasing. So you guys are very, very angry at each other. Having that third party company in the middle is really going to diffuse that situation. That third party is nowhere near as emotionally invested into that property as the tenant because it's not their home and they're not as emotionally invested in the asset as you because they aren't the ones that bought it. Having them in the middle really going to diffuse a lot of situations and keep you out of the hot water and hopefully it will reduce your chance of ending up in a violent situation because of the property management business to almost zero. Well, that's everything I've got for you today. I want to thank you for watching the video. If you've got any further questions about any of the stories that we mentioned today or just the real estate business in general, go ahead and drop those in the comments below. We'll get you an answer. It might be as simple as replying to your comment or we may even go ahead and make a full video just like this one answering your comment as part of the Ask James Wise series that we run on this channel as well. At the heart of it, the point of this channel, it's to help investors make money investing in the business. But the main way we do that is by peeling back the curtain so you can see exactly what the business is like. We want to educate you to be the best landlords and real estate investors you can possibly be. Above all, safety should and always will be the number one priority. So educate yourself, make sure you know what you're getting into, and stay safe out there. I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, 
Holt & Wise as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area can market your property in a video just like this one to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from health. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.